let's go ahead let's get started because the sun gets down in about an hour and so what starts getting dark and then so father we just we thank you we thank you lord god that we could serve this city we thank you lord god that we could meet the needs of some lord god just out of your in your name for your glory lord that every body that was healed lord god every emotions that were healed every demonic presence that was cast out that were free Father, it is territory for you. It is glory for you, Lord God, because we serve you. You are king. You are Lord of all. And we thank you. Lord God, now we can come and just open up the scriptures, Lord God, as you have declared us to, to teach and to train and equip one another. And Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Lord God, just to serve you, be obedient to your word, and to do actually what you told us to do. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, yes. I've been asking people why they don't go to the chat and smoke Oh, yeah. This gentleman behind me just said because people come out of their weird. People. What's <laughs> next? <laughs> people come out of their weird. And I said, maybe, maybe they met you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, but then that's true. Because I know when we used to go to the school of the and a lot of them don't want to go there, they have to meet certain requirements. Yeah. They can't do that. They don't want to follow rules. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, just spare their belly. Yeah, yeah, they stay the distance. Well, um, we're going to start on page 23, uh, section 2. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm always gonna. I, I I'm gonna recap. Um. Yeah, no, you have it in your email. You can. Follow. No. No. Do you have it on your email? If you have, if you do, you have an email on your phone. She can email you the PDF. In. And do you okay? Basically, what, what we're talking about in the new man is, is is the difference between what we would call experiential side and positional. So the experiential side of Christianity is what on a on a human level what we all experience or fail to experience. So uh, on the experience side, it's all over the place in the lives of different believers. Uh, some have experienced greater, some experience more, but it's not that. Well, uh, we're going to go on 23. I'm just kind of doing a recap. And yeah. And so, and that's, that's the part that, that most, this is where most churches get a little confused because they're preaching out of the experiential side. When the Bible talks about the positional side, the positional side, it would be, you are complete in him. You were accepted in the beloved. You were made as a new creation in Christ. Old things passed away. All things have become new. And so most of the time, because the church can't rectify it, and know how to put it together, they usually end up lowering their teaching to fit what the experiential side of what the people in the congregation have experienced. When in the reality, here's the truth of scripture. We're calling you to look like Christ. Why? Because that's what the scripture says. Does ever has everyone experienced that? No. Oh, okay. So then how would that fit or make sense? Well, it makes sense because that's called discipleship. That's called learning and growing and stretching, stretching your faith, learning how to do. If, and so part of, of, of just being a disciple is learning how to minister, uh, minister to the sick, minister to uh, those that are emotionally uh, you know, distraught, learning how to, pe how to set people free, learning how to love on people in a biblical fashion, in a biblical way, in the correct way, um, and not just a religious fashion. And so if Christ called us to something and that is the threshold, that is the goal, then, then the experiential side has to come up. So if put it this way, Carmen, if, if I told you, you have a million dollars a day to spend every day you're alive. Doesn't matter. The next day, you're going to have another million dollars in there. 
would it make sense to only spend $15 every day? Because whatever you don't spend is done. It's not going to carry over. It's not going to be two minutes. You're just going to have it. And that's what you're going to have every day, every day, every day. You're going to have an abundance. You're going to have a fullness of it. So if you, if you spent lacking, then you're not, you're not living to the fullness of what is available to you. So in the reality within the church that we don't usually understand is that what is available to you is greater than anything that the church has usually ever been able to describe or comprehend. Because we think of the best part of the Bible. Think, think of what is the most perfect part of the Bible? What, what, what areas of the Bible could we point at and go, man, there's no problems there. There's no issues in the lives of human beings. In the beginning. Okay. In the garden. In the garden. Okay. How about where else? Anywhere else? <laughs> but people are going to go Genesis, Revelations, right? Like the last three chapters of Revelations, the first two chapters of Genesis, that's where it was perfect. And, and, and it says because Adam had dominion, Adam had dominion and authority over the earth. That's cool. But what does Matthew 28, 19 say? 18 and 19. What's the commission? But what, what did he say? All authority ha has been given unto me in heaven and earth. Okay. So Jesus has all authority. That's really, really cool. Yay, Jesus, right? Wait, you said who are Matthew 28, 18 and 19. Okay, so Matthew, Matthew 28, 18 and 19 is Jesus declaring he has all authority. Okay, so like, for instance, whenever I'm talking to Jehovah Witnesses, and I always bring this scripture out, because if Jesus is lower than Jehovah, but he has all authority, and in the Greek text, all is all, then what authority does Jehovah have if Jesus has it all? And then I've, I've had this conversation with Jehovah's Witnesses and their pastors and their wives. And, and then, they, then they stop coming for about two or three years because they don't know how to answer that. Because if Jesus has it all and to a Jehovah's Witness, he's not Jehovah, then that doesn't make sense. And they don't know how to place that. Who do they think Jehovah is? His father, separate. So, okay, go to Ephesians chapter one. If Jesus has all authority... Then it's important what he did with that authority. 28, 18, and 19. My wife's so good to me. <laughs> Wait. She's walking around with Ezra. Trust me, the last thing she's thinking about is her phone. <laughs> Is she Ephesians 1? Yeah. All right, just follow with me. I'm going to read a, a section of scripture. And, and Carmen, you know this. We like to read large portions of scripture because then it makes more sense. Right? Instead of picking something out, it makes more sense to read a whole section of scripture because there was something... It was a purpose of why he read it. Mm -hmm. So let's not assume what he's reading and, and put assumptions to it. Let's read it for what it is and put it, put it in its correct, understand its correct meaning. So Ephesians 1, this is Paul writing to the church of Ephesus, which, by the way, is the most mature picture of the church in the New Testament. The Ephesian church was the church that operated in the fivefold ministry. So they're a very, very the most i'll say they're the most mature picture of a new testament church okay paul says this blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ who has blessed us with what some spiritual blessings right 
Every, okay. I'm just, just interesting. Okay, every. Every spiritual blessing in where? Heavenly places in Christ. Okay. Well, see, if, if, if it's experiential that we're going for, which most Christianity preaches the experiential side, then that does me no good because those blessings are in heaven and not in me. If the two don't touch and the two don't collide and the two don't connect, <laughs> then what good is the blessings if they're in heaven and not for me? Then you know how I live? If that's the case, I live waiting for the rapture and rapture becomes my salvation. Or death. So it's either the death or the rapture and the rapture becomes an escape plan. While, I, while, while I'm a... Well, I'm a, a, a believer with hope that has, no, that has no ability to change his environment or his situation. So. It's so funny because the girl that we were, the red-headed girl, she was like, I know you Jesus, I love you so much. I gave my life to you. Oh, yeah. Oh, they've been church. Hey, they used the bridge to get to the Father. She gave yeah. you a lot. Yeah. I'm like, well, what are you waiting for? The rapture. <laughs> yeah. And because and, 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 the reality is most Christians have two, they, they have two salvations. And none of them is Christ. It's death or the rapture. In other words, I don't want to pay any more bills. I wish you'd just come. <laughs> come on, we've all heard that. Or well, we've all thought it at one point in time before truth came in. Because the reality is that's not the salvation. That's a wedding day. It's not an escape plan. It's not a back trap door. Or death. And see, most people think of death as in, okay, when you die, then all of these things that the Bible promised you, they're all yours. So when, if you have pain here, when you get to heaven, you have no pain. So death is my savior then? So when, when through the New Testament scriptures, does it ever say that God had to use death to bring us victory? When the scripture says death, where is your victory? Grave, where is your sting? Very different. It doesn't match. <laughs> so here's Paul writing, okay, heavenly places. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. Deborah, are you blameless? Um, <laughs> are you blameless? Yes, you're blameless. Okay, yeah. You are. I am. See, <laughs> see, I, I'm, I'm saying that because, see, he, here's the reality. We're very comfortable saying Jesus is perfect. You know what we're uncomfortable saying? That he made me perfect. Because we go, I know what I did 20 minutes ago. I know how I grew up. Okay. But I thought there was a positional side in the reality of Scripture, and then there's an ex experiential side. So, if you what's what's more true, the positional side of what the Scripture says who you are, or the experiential side of what we know we failed in? But I thought we were a new creation. What's true? See, this is what we have to settle this stuff. Because if we don't settle it, then this is how we walk through ups and downs. Okay, then we sing songs that say he's the God of the hills and the valleys. See, that's true. That's the Old Testament. That's true. But then John the Baptist says that Jesus came and what? He came to lift up the valleys and lower the mountains. He ain't the God of the hills and the valleys anymore. He straightened the line. Why? Because we are in him. So that means I, sh I it will I struggle? I may. If I don't understand truth, I can. If, if, I, if I waver in the fight, see, you are not unattackable. The enemy's going to attack. He's going to try. You're, you're not unattackable, but you are untouchable. I like that. <laughs> Hold on. That's like a deep thought. Wait. <laughs> You're, un, what, you're, you're, not, you're, you're not unattackable. You're not unattackable. You are untouchable. I can prove that in scripture. We need a organ right now. We need a 
Well, then, okay. Because, okay. Here, okay. If we base it on our experiences of being attacked, then we would say that doesn't make sense and that's not true. But then Ephesians is wrong because it says that the shield of faith will quench every fiery dart of the wicked one. So one of us is wrong, either the scriptures or our experience. So then we no longer can, then we no longer can lean on our experience. Then that means we must have faith and believe in truth. And truth is going to sound weird around other Christians if they don't understand it. Yeah, like I've, I've had some that always say to you, like, I'm just a sinner. And I was like, then well, you're not. Then you're not saved. Again? I was like, I'm not a sinner. And they're like, what? They look at me like. How dare sinner. you? Like, yes, yes, you are. are. Like, well, you're the I'm, I'm like, I'm not a sinner because I'm born again. A sinner is somebody that's not born again. I'm not a sinner, but it's worse because you're choosing to sin not because you think. But I'm not a sinner. Yeah. Like, that don't mean I don't make mistakes. That don't mean I don't get mad. That don't mean, yeah. But I'm not a sinner. I've been washed. I've been cleansed. I've been made new. Even Paul says in 2 Corinthians, right before that whole text about you are a new creation in Christ, old things pass away, all things become new. Right before that, the context of that is he said, we no longer can judge each other by the flesh. And then it says, and even Christ, we know him no longer in the flesh. What is he talking about? The resurrected Christ is different, is different than Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The resurrected Christ is different. Even that, even there was a change in that. Here, here's, here's, the, here's the better picture. We don't get Adam's authority. By one man's sin, through Adam, all fell. But through the righteousness of one, Christ, we were made complete through him. We don't get Adam's dominion and authority. We get Jesus' dominion and authority. See, Adam had a dominion and authority in this earth. Jesus said, I have all authority in heaven and in earth. See, then that makes more sense when he says, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. See, that makes more sense. So then that makes more sense when I can walk up to somebody who's got a bolt in his leg and say, be healed right now in Jesus' name, go try it. And he looks at me like, you're crazy. Maybe, maybe in your head, not mine, go do it. And then he comes back and goes, dude, it worked. So what'd you think? I didn't doubt that it wasn't going to work. I knew it was. Why? Because he said so. But most Christians don't know how to live that way, talk that way, think that way. Uh, no. <laughs> and, I, and I hear it all the time. Yeah. yeah. The, 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 so, the, uh, or I say, Adam, they're they're like, Adam mode. Yeah. Like, I'm going to keep you in prayer. Do it right now. And they're like, they're so weird. I've, like, I've never done that before in public. Right now. Or there's been, you know, folks I'm like, before we leave, I'm praying for you. And I do it in the fight. No one's ever done that. I was like, don't worry, yeah. I'm not going to get Pentecostal on you. I'm just going to do it very simple. I'm just going, I'm just going to be a believer on you. Speak in, and, and they're just like, they're like shocked. They're like, what? I had one time you I went that? to a and a guy was Muslim. Oh, the one here in Manteca. Yeah. You told me, yeah. yeah. And I was like, you tell him going on and going on and going on about his brother and everything and the problems. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do the And I was like, Right now. Let's handle this right now. So, and we haven't even got to the good part here in Ephesians. It's good, but it's getting better. It says, just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world to be holy and blameless before him in love. He predestined us to adoption as sons to himself through Jesus Christ, according to the good pleasure of his will. When you're reading Ephesians 1, write down every time it says his. His pleasure, his will, his purpose. Over and over again, it's his. Guess what? The new covenant, his idea. <laughs> Out of his pleasure, it was his idea to make me new. And I get to benefit from his thoughts, in his heart, from his love, that I'm new. Dude, that's amazing. I, you know what that means? I can't even mess it up, Ted. 
I can't mess it up because the covenant wasn't with me. The covenant wasn't with me. It was made between the Father and Jesus. And he said, and I've given all things unto the Son. That's really, that's a really good deal. Then it goes on. To the praise of the glory of his grace, which he graciously bestowed on us in the beloved. In him, we have redemption through his blood and the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Dude, I'm not even saved by my grace. I'm not even, I, I did nothing. For, everything is his. Dude, that's so good. Which he lavished on me. Dude, that's, that's, that's a word that would be used like in cribs. <laughs> Remember that, remember the, I don't know if you guys ever remember the MTV show Cribs. Like that house is lavish, right? And God was like, I'm going to lavish you with all of heaven. Everything Jesus had is yours. It's yours. Why? Because he didn't, he, here, here's his very, a church term. God wants to use you. No, God wants to recreate you. God wants to kill the old you and give you back a new you. And then in that ability of giving you back, he gives you a free will. And out of that free will, you choose to what? Obey. I get to obey. I get to serve. I get to be free. I don't, I, I'm, I have the, the willpower to not get caught up on my phone into stuff that I shouldn't. I have the willpower to not go off and in, 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 into sin, into you know, into pornography, into lust, into all these things. Why? Because he who has this hope purifieth himself. I'm free. You know how amazing it is to be free. That's so cool. And in the free part, like what we talked about last week, I get to go free other people. Because he told me, you have an office. It's, who has a phone real quick that can Google something? Google one word, minister. Because we're going we're gonna to kill some sacred cows with just that statement. Google, Google minister. minister. I guarantee you've never heard it this way. And it's the actual <laughs> definition. <laughs> that, it, 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 that will be the first one because that's the example. What's the second one? Okay, I'm going to pause right here. Clergy is a current term that we have turned it to be. The original definition of the word minister is exactly what it said on the, on the lower part, that it was when the time of Jesus and in the time that the scriptures were written. A, what, what was it? So what government department would that be? The kingdom of God, right? So I get an office. You get an office. Why? Because you're a son. And you get to operate out of that authority, coming, living in this nation called a foreign nation, representing that kingdom on this earth. That Carmen, I get to be able to walk up to somebody and say, be free. I get to walk up to somebody and say, be healed. That I can sit there and, and we had the, I was telling you guys a story last week from David, uh, one of the Lifeson leaders in Texas, that he prayed for a woman when they had the formula shortage a couple of months back. And in Texas, in this city, there was none. And they couldn't find any. And so uh, uh, a young mom, she was really scared because she was breastfeeding but it was formula all you know all and it wasn't coming in and and you know her milk wasn't coming in and she was getting scared and all this stuff and so they sent an email to jjlm and david gets the, the message and he's on his way he was like dude what do i say to this like i was like bro tell her body to work command it command it to work and, and he was like okay i said so i said to make her feel very comfortable right just speak it just, and don't, I said, don't, you don't have to be all specific and weird. <laughs> See, that's the key. I, I hear how 
it takes all the extra words and just has a couple of words and it's done. Yeah. I said, don't, and don't make it weird. You know, just simple. It's just tell, I, right now, I command your body to operate right now in Jesus' name. Okay. He gets a text first thing in the morning from her husband. Body kicks in. Milk is completely normal. Matter of fact, she hadn't even needed formula since. And it's like, that's so crazy. Yeah, but he turned water into wine. Why would that be a big deal? In the Old Testament, the prophet threw a stick in a, in a pool of water and it went from bitter to sweet. And here we are wringing our hands going, well, what about the food shortage? Well, then multiply it. Or the economy. But the water, you know, yeah. it's not good. It's like, Absolutely. See, if we walk in his authority, would Jesus have been wringing his hands? Would Jesus be, you know, sending memes, memes to Biden? <laughs> no. He would go, no, I'm not even worried about that authority. Here's, here's a quick, quick lesson. When Jesus gets arrested and he goes before the Sanhedrin and they question him about, are you the Messiah. Note, catch this. He never answers their question. You know who he did answer the question to when he asked him directly? Pilate. Why? Because the Pharisees weren't judicial, they weren't governmental. They had no governmental position. Jesus said, No, that's a king. This king talks to a king. I don't talk to people that aren't king. So he spoke to the one in authority. Wow. The man of authority spoke to the man of authority and then asked him a question. What do you think? Wow. So you, dude, you got you to catch this stuff when you're reading your Bible. It's so good. It's so good. So rich. Maybe. I don't know me. I because I love that part. I, when I when I caught it, I was like, "Oh my god, that's good." Here's a you know. Oh, I'm gonna go off. Well, in the Gospel of uh, Luke, it says you know they would conspire against them, conspire against them, and conspire against them. And then the scripture says, I don't. It's like Luke 24, 23 or something. And then Jesus tells his disciples. I'm going to go. I'm going to die. And this is like a, a week before. And he tells them they're, they're going to kill me. He gives his whole rundown. And then the next words, after he finished telling his disciples, it says, and then the Pharisees, yada, yada, yada. In other words, here's what he was saying. They couldn't touch it until Jesus said, this is what's happening. When he spoke it, now it can be. But they couldn't even do it. How, go through the, I, just, I just finished reading through John. Three times it says, and, they, and he walked right through them and they couldn't touch him because his time hadn't yet come. I just finished reading John too. Three times. So he, and it says, and he walked right through the crowd. Why? He knew who he was. Okay. Which he lavished on us in all wisdom and insight, making known to us the mystery of his will. According to his good pleasure, which he purposed in himself as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in Christ, which are in heaven and on earth. He united all things at that point that were in heaven on earth. When? That the plan of the fullness to unite all things through Christ. When did Christ unite all things? In heaven on earth. See, we read this stuff and we just read it so fast and we're just like, oh, that's really good text. That's cool. That's, that'll, yeah, and, we, and we're like, that'll preach. You know, we say dumb stuff like that. Mind you, we have it already yeah. That's a good Bible you have there. It's a, it's a Bible. Dude, that, that's life transformational. That through Christ, he reconciled everything in heaven on earth. Wow. Guess where I'm at? On earth. Reconciled. That's good stuff. In him also, we have received an inheritance. 
being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his own will, that we who were the first to hope in Christ should live for the praise of his glory. In him you also, after hearing the word of truth. I love that. It doesn't say the word. It says the word of truth. So you can hear word, but if it ain't truth, it ain't nothing. The gospel of your salvation, and after believing in him, we're sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance. What is our inheritance? The Spirit. Unto the redemption of the purchased possession. What was the purchased possession? Us. To the praise of his glory. Therefore, I also, after hearing of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, do not cease giving thanks for you, mentioning you in my prayers, so that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. God is trying to give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation. He ain't trying to hide it. He's not digging it under holes and making you dig and try to find it and work really hard for it. He wants to give it to you more than you want to have it. But there's only one way to get it. The knowledge of him. There's one way to get. You want revelation? You want wisdom? He says what? Know him. That's it. That's the hard work. Know him. Why? Because Hebrew 4 says what? Faith is the rest. Faith is not the fight. Faith is the rest. That the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened. That you may know. I, I thought all the churches always say, well, we'll never know. You know, God's mysterious. God's, you know, he does mysterious things in mysterious ways. No, he says that you will know what is the hope of his calling. And what are the riches of his glory? of his inheritance among the saints. And what is the sur surpassing greatness of his power toward us who believe? According to the working of his mighty power, which he performed in Christ, when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in the heavenly places. Catch this. Far above all principalities and power. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 that we fight against principalities and powers. And yet it says Christ is far above. Far above. Way above. Not even close. Not even near. It ain't even a conversation. Far above all principalities and power. And might. And dominion. And every name that is named. Not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things. What does all mean? All. And he put all things in subjection under his feet. So all things are under his feet. And made him the head over all things. For the what? He put it all under his feet, made Jesus the head for himself. No, he was already the head of all things. So who did he do it for? Us. The church, which is his body. The fullness of him who fills all things in all ways. You'll never read Ephesians 1 uh, the same again. Never. Ain't scripture just good? Rich. And you know what? We've probably read it so many times and never caught the truth of the reality of all that he did. So this is why section two, reality talking, section two, reality, fact, and truth. So, reality is perceived. Different perceptions according to different viewpoints. People perceive through different lenses. Bless you. 
So, and this might be a new term for you and your husband. I don't know. I don't know if it is or it isn't what I'm going to say right now. Um, and I think, Carmen, you've heard me say this before. See, you can be a New Testament believer with Old Testament thinking. Okay. You're supposed to, and you and I are supposed to be a New Testament believer with New Testament thinking. So here's, here's one simple doctrinal test. If you use this, you can apply it to any sermon you will ever hear or any worship song you will ever hear. And you're going to go, that's not true. I'm, I'm going to ruin you. And it's a very simple statement. And you're never going to hear music, worship music, or another church sermon again, because you're going to pick it up very quick. And you, you don't, I can't even find a real song anymore. <laughs> it, okay. All right. I'm going to ruin you. This is it. I'm going to give you two seconds. One, two. You're still here. All right. Too late. It's called the I am principle. I am. Moses is going through, through the desert. God appears to him and he tells him, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jesus says later, mentioning that same conversation, he says, I am not the God of the dead, but of the living. So this is what the I am principle means. If you hear a song or a sermon that says he will be or he was, no. Wrong teaching. Wrong doctrine holy spirit come nope he's here and if he's not in the christians then that church has a really big problem and you know we've heard that you know the it's the i am yeah. he's the i am he will be or what either he will be or he was. he was nope he's the i am always present tense so does god heal i am i'm always saying yeah, I've said it, I've said it many times before. Yeah. I hear you, but that one I'm like, he's here. He's yeah. Here. Or like, I hear you, but that song, and I, I hate, I hate it, but it, I love the song, but it's hard to hear. But that Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Yeah. What to me? Like, where did it go? Yeah. Um, did it go? Well, you could change the right words and just make it yourself. Or, <laughs> Or, or, or right? yeah. Spirit, yeah. Or, 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 we we were coming back from LA County Saturday. We're and we're going and we're we're singing um it was a Maverick City music song. And and it, um I don't remember the No, no, no. Wake up out of the grave. <laughs> no, what what's the the one that goes into Spanish? Oh it's like 20 minutes. I just heard it. It's in my car. I don't remember the name of it. But okay, okay, okay let me ask you. Oh man, this is gonna mess y'all up. This is gonna mess you up. No, no, it's just this is just Maverick City music. Okay. When is the marriage supper of the Lamb? What? When is the marriage supper of the Lamb? If you've ever heard this in a church, when are we married to Jesus? When we all meet up. When? When we were saved? Okay. Who else? When we become one. Okay. So we're one. one. Okay. Yeah. See, the, see, these are things that we talk, and we're just saying it in passing. Nobody thinks about it. When, we're, when are we married to him? Born again? Okay. What, <laughs> what, what were the words that we read in Ephesians? In him. In him. Okay, go look up Old Testament texts about a husband and a wife. In the sense of consummation of a marriage. And he knew her. Okay. So how are we one with him? When we know him. Okay. So if we know him and we're one with him. See, he's not a fornicator. But you got to catch the simplicity of it. We are one with him. We are the bride of Christ. See, the Old Testament is just a shadow to cast it out for the New Testament to go, oh, that makes sense now. You are one with him. So, okay, let's use the equivalent. Yeah. Yeah. Whose last name do you have? Yeah. 
Whose last name is that? Okay. And so when you can go to the bank and you can write your name, and let's say, I know you work as well, but let's say you didn't. Let's say you were, you, you know, you took care of the kids, you were a stay-at-home mom and all those things. Okay. Would you have full authority? Yeah, if your husband gave you authority. And you could sign. Why? Whether you worked or not, it don't matter. He gave it to you. And you could pull all the money out of the bank account. Exactly. 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 Right? That's that it, it, because he gave that authority. We'll use it in that way. Okay. It's the same thing in the biblical text. Because what does it say? In my in my stead. In my, what he's saying is in my authority. When you speak, speak as if it's me. That's what it actually means in Jesus' name. We're talking about this on Saturday. See, we a lot of times we use in the name of Jesus as like a hocus pocus rat tail at the very end of the potion that we mix and then go, okay, well, I said it in Jesus' name, so it must work. No, that's called mysticism. It's called sorcery within the church. Because we're using something. I'm not saying don't use the name of Jesus. Using the name of Jesus is wonderful. When it's in that way, no, that's not what he was saying. He was saying, do it in my stead. Speak is the way I would. The way Peter says it this way. When you speak, speak as the oracles of God. That's what Peter says. This is why when we're, he when we're laying hands on the sick, I don't go, God, right now. This is the one right here. Bring it down. God goes, no, I have nothing. Yeah, God goes, I have nothing to do with it. I don't have anything to do with that healing. Why? Because I already did it. It's not. It's the same way, Carmen. If you're walking up to somebody and they're going to be saved, you go, God, this one right here. This one's going to be saved. Shine the light. No, God goes, I already, I shed my blood. It's done. Will they believe? Right? It's up to them. Okay. But in healing, here's the different part. See, I can lay hands on the sick. I don't. It's not their will. It's their body I'm changing, not their will. That's good. That's good. See, I can't change their will, so I can't force you into the kingdom. That's a shame. That's good. So is that so that they can believe? Is that what? Right? Of course, all over. It, it kept on saying, and and he healed for a sign. Because it's, it's the opposite I of how we were do. taught that whoever right. wants. To be healed that you have to have faith and it's not that way no it's we the ones that are laying the he said believers go lay hands on the sick and they shall recover so even if they don't believe they still get healed the dude was smoking a blunt when he got healed just when we just came he asked me if i wanted some and i was like no dude i'm good i'll give you something better than that but see see religion would say oh you don't deserve that you can't you You're in sin. Wow. Yeah, you'll sober up right now. Watch. Wow. Because see, to for salvation, it's their will. I'm not changing their will. I'm changing their body. I have every right to. That's not right. How come the leaking just came on like a flood and we can't take it out? <laughs> Not fair. But see, because there will see here you got and you, this is why and this is why the sovereign the sovereignty message of well it's all God's truth that's why it's so destructive. Or if it's God's will, because it puts the responsibility on God when God said, "Church, I, I give it to you." It. What did Ephesians one say? I gave it to you. Why? So I could give it to the church. So church, go do it. So why is your city destructive? I don't know, church. Why is it destructive? Now you know why there's no church. Yeah. Why, why, why does, why is the city of Manteca have homeless? I don't know, church. You tell me. Why is there, why is there so much poverty and violence in Stockton? I don't know, Christians. That's Jesus going. I don't know. That's what I'm confused about. Why are all these, all these laws? Yeah. Going. Why are these politicians doing what they're doing, church? I don't know. Why you tell me. Have, you know, I gave you, I gave you legal authority. So we need to put God's government in there. Absolutely. And you know where it starts. He said, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So God goes, do it here. Know it's there. <laughs> do it here. Know it's there. That doesn't mean to pick up guns and go fight. No, you know what it means? It's exactly what John the Baptist. See, we never find a story where John the Baptist preached. We know he preached repentance. 
and he preached it strongly. We don't ever have a story of him calling out a man walking down the street and going, you adulterer, take your wife back to your sister, right? Or to your brother. But you know who did do it to? Government official. Why? You know better. Go read through Matthew. Every time in Matthew when it brings up hell and Jesus is conversating. Go read up every time. You know what you're going to find? You know who he's talking to? The disciples and the Pharisees. I know he always talks to the Pharisees, but he's talking to the Matthew 10, first time he brings it up. And you know when he brings it up? Matthew 10. You know when you know why he brings it up? Because he's commissioning them to go lay hands on the sick. And why? He has to set in the reality. This is your responsibility. You better understand. See, he doesn't lay the responsibility on the world, he lays it on the church. It is the church's responsibility to go and change the world. And these churches are putting the, the responsibility on God when it's already yeah. been done and it's our job to go and, yeah. Yeah. Why? When, we were, when we were in Lancaster, and so I'm praying for this woman, right? The, the, the homeowner. I'm praying for her and I'm just like, okay, this isn't going anywhere. I prayed for her and I walked away. Came back, prayed for again, walked away. And I was like, okay, this is all right. All right. And so here's the beauty of the spirit. He will give you the information you need ahead of time without you even knowing you're going to need it ahead of time. But he'll give it to you so you have it in your back pocket when right on time. Wow. So we're driving Friday. Vitaly calls from Portland, gives me the answer to something of, of a question that I didn't even know I was going to have until we're there on Saturday. So we get there on Saturday. I'm praying for this woman. Nothing's going on. And I stand back and I look at her and say, okay. I get on a knee. Here's an older woman. They, the doctor says she should have been dead already. And so she's, she's in bad shape. Uh, you know, she was. I get on one knee and I grab, I grab her by the hand and I look at her. I said, I have one question for you. This is going to sound maybe weird, but I have a question for you. She said, what? Do you want to live? And she said, of course I want to be healed. I didn't ask you if you wanted to be healed. I said, I asked you, do you want to live? Ted was, four times I had to ask her before she broke down and said, I don't know. I don't know if I want to live. And then she just, emotion, she just unloaded. And I'm just standing there and I was waiting for her. Four times it took for me to get that out of her. And then she said, and then, see, catch every time Jesus walked up to people. Every time he would minister to people, he would ask them, what do you want? I want to see. Go see. What do you want? I want to walk. Take your bed up and walk. And then he gets to a man at the pool of Bethesda and says, what do you want? You know what he does? Well, now I have no man to take me. That's not what Jesus asked him. Jesus didn't say, what's your complaint? He said, what do you want? So I asked, what do you want? Four times, and this woman, finally, she gets all emotional. She gets riled up. And then she says, I can't live like this. I can't live in pain. And she just goes, all this stuff. My son said he's going he's gonna to kill himself if, 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 one, you know, if I die. And just all this weight. And so she just unloads all of this. And then she's just sobbing, right? Give her a few seconds. And then I said, okay, now it's time. Give me your hand. Now you're ready. What do you want? I want to live. What do you want? I want to live. Be healed. Totally different. Totally different. Why? Make up your mind. What do you want? She was eating. She was eating hard food. What do you want? Is that simple? So was it the way that she was feeling that was allowing her not to want it? Because James says it this way. A double man is unstable in all of his ways. Let not that man think he will receive. In other words, I'm pouring life into her. She's rejecting it. I'm pouring life in her. She, on her own will, is rejecting it. Because she's not convinced she wants to live. 
She's not able to receive what God is trying to give her. That simple. And then when she gave in and her will opened, I'm not fighting her will now. All I'm fighting is the sickness. And the sickness, that's not a fight. That's not a fight at all. See, we think of cancer, we go, oh, that's a big devil. No, that's a really small devil. Why? We've given all, we've been given all authority. I got to face that. Yeah. But I did that with the walk. Mm -hmm. And it's first, when we were in Lancaster, first person we had, it was a daughter and a mom. And she was like, yeah, I had this all quiet the whole time for four hours as I talked quiet and then she goes i've had this cough that doesn't want to go the moment she said that she starts coughing right oh. so i get her up and i go okay come on bring your daughter you know bring your daughter we're gonna we're gonna pray for you daughter starts praying for her and she starts choking like she can't breathe and all this stuff and just this anxiety and all this stuff's going on and i'm just watching her and i'm telling her daughter go ahead just pray for her pray for her. you know command it to go and like it, it's kind of like you, you know you're like you're boiling water and the cap's on and it's just, like, you can see it, right? And she's just there. And so finally I said, okay, honey, I'm going to show you something. Right? And I laid hands on her mom and I said, okay, calm down. Take a deep breath. Okay. I commanded to go right now in Jesus' name. Instantly, it was gone. So then I took that moment and I said, okay, here's, here's the lesson in this. Okay? The lesson is you have the Prince of Peace. You have dominion and authority. Operate it. Don't be flustered. Calm the situation down every single time. Calm it down. Always calm it down. Why? Because you're an authority. And I said, be in peace. When you're ministering, don't be in flux and nervous. Why? Because you ain't doing it. If you're nerve, if you're in flux and nervous in your emotions, you think you have a part in it. That's cute. But you don't. It's the power of the spirit through you. So why be nervous if it ain't you doing? I, I think what I've been doing now is I think about like, okay, the same spirit that, you know, you, like, um, what do you call that? That rose him from the dead. Same spirit. To me. to me. I just have to, you know, let him out. That's it. Yeah. It's just, it's simple. See, I don't have to fight for it. And then we go, well, but what's the difference between a demonic spirit or a sickness? Nothing. Nothing. Treat it the same way. Treat it all like a devil. <laughs> right? And because in the car, you were. <laughs> but okay. Remember the story I told you about my brother? That my brother had a tumor and pushed his intestines and pinched it. They showed him the tumor and he almost died, my brother David. They helicoptered him into San Francisco hospital. He laid hands on himself on the helicopter, gets there, checks the x-rays, tumor's completely gone. They found the tumor here in Tracy. They couldn't find it in San Francisco when he arrived. But he still had to go through surgery. Right? He still had to, he, he still went through surgery. They had to open him up, cut that piece out, and put it back. And after he got out of the hospital, we were, I think we we're at my mom's house. And he goes, dude, that's so crazy. He goes, God healed me of the tumor, but why didn't why didn't the intestines get healed? And I said, What'd you ask him? And he goes, For the tumor to be gone? You should have just said be healed. And he, he laughed and he was like, that's so dumb. And I was like, dude, what did you say? Tumor be gone. He commanded the tumor to leave, and the tumor was gone. That's why here's the simple thing. Don't get specific. Just say be healed. If you, if you need to drill down a little bit, that's fine. But initially, don't get all specific. Why? Don't matter. It's just the life of Christ flowing from you into them. Be healed. It's just life. It's the Holy Spirit. Hey, me. It's just simple. And you're going to find 90% of, of it. You're going to find 90% of the results. You're going to find in the general statements. You know why? Because if you learn how to walk in authority, that devil doesn't need you to name it. It's going to go because it doesn't want to fight the authority. 
It doesn't, it, it, it doesn't get complicated. Okay. Perception. Perception differs according to viewpoint. Truth never changes. Truth just is. Okay. Daniel 12, 4. 4. We're just going to read these, these couple verses and we'll get through section Daniel 2. Uh, oh, Daniel 12, 4. First scripture on the... Or the second scripture, sorry. It says on uh, minus page 23. Some of them might be 24. Mine's on 23. It says, But thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and knowledge shall be increased. Okay, I want to give a quick definition of what knowledge means. Typically in the Greek, or in the, here in the Hebrew, it means two things. Knowledge is facts, information, and skills acquired by a person through experience or education. Okay. Facts, information, skills acquired by a person through experience or education. Paul said, I'm going to, I'm going to re-say a statement, a scripture we read earlier in Ephesians 1. It says that you would, that you would receive all wisdom and revelation through the knowledge of him. Most people read that and they go, through the information that Jesus exists. No. The definition means you had to have experience with it to have knowledge of it. See, you want wisdom and revelation? You have to be a person through experience and education, intertwining yourself with that subject to have knowledge of it. So here, even the time where it says uh, that you would run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased. Experiential and educational information is going to run to and fro. Okay. Hosea 4, 6. My people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Not information, but here's the second understanding of the Hebrew text in the word knowledge. Awareness or familiarity gained by experience of a fact or a situation. If you don't know that, you sh that, that sickness doesn't have a right to be on your body, then you're destroyed for a lack of knowledge. Destroyed doesn't mean you're going to hell. Destroy, des destruction is the exterior. Um, four, six. Destroyed is the exterior side. So if you don't know you can be free, then you're going to be a Christian walking around with depression, thinking that God gave it to you, or it's a lesson for you to learn. If you don't know you can be healed, you're going to walk around sick and say, well, God must be doing something through it. You have a lack of knowledge and you're being destroyed. And then here's the second part in that text. Because thou hast rejected knowledge. Ted, we were after the meeting, after we ministered and after we prayed, a friend of the, uh, a friend of the family showed up and we were in Lancaster. And every sacred, every sacred, uh, sacred cow, and we're just, we're just counting them. Like, okay, that's number one. That's number two. There's no, I mean, she's going down the line. She's so intense. Like she was sitting there and it just went. And I'm just playing tennis with her. And at the very end, I'm answering her questions, going back and forth. She's trying to distract. She's trying to take the conversation right. She's trying to take the conversation left. And I'm just answering the questions, going through, going through, digging down, digging down to the bedrock of her questions. To the very end, she goes, I've never thought of it like that. I'm really intrigued with what you had to say. Will she? I don't know. But see, this is the point where knowledge came into contact with her. Now, what she does with it is her choice. What you do with the information you hear today, it's up to you. See, because if you leave here and you go, man, that sounds really cool, really good. But I don't totally believe that. Okay? You don't have to. 
if the scriptures say that that's the truth, then it's the truth. And if you don't receive that as the truth, you can't say he didn't bring it to you. You can't. You can't say, God, you know, you never told me. I did. You rejected it. So if the scripture says, okay, you're healed. And the, that information comes to you. Um, let me, I'll read you Matthew 13. This is huge. I got to read fast because it's getting dark fast. Matthew 13, verse 18. Okay. Ma Matthew 13, 18, and 19 says this. Therefore, listen to the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom. Okay. Gosh, you got to catch this and underline this in your Bible. Or highlight it or whatever. Anyone who hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it. The evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. So, you can be, you, the Holy Spirit will bring you an answer before you need it. You will hear about healing. And one of the things that I will promise you that will happen that week, you will, your sickness will come knocking on your door. And you know what the devil's going to go? Do you really believe what you heard? Because if you don't, then I'm going to knock it out of you. Do you really think you're one with him? Because if you don't, I'm going to knock it out of you. He said, because here's the thing. Understanding isn't informational. Understanding is information with experiential. Tying the two together. See, so if you don't understand who you are, oh, he's going to kick them tires, man. And he's going to try. And then all of a sudden, you're going to go, win, you know, it's going to be Thursday, and you're going to go, everything I just said was wrong. Achoo! Everything I just said. No. See, this is where you, it, and I'm not saying that people don't get sick. People do get sick. I'm saying you don't have to accept it. And then here's the fundamental question that we always get, and it, got, it even got brought. So then you're saying no one's going to die? No, I didn't say that. I didn't say that. Well, then how would we die? How about old age and decision? How about it's just time, and I don't want to be here anymore, and I'm ready to go? But I'm not. Why do I have to? Why is it that I have to die of sickness? Why can't I just die of a good old age at 120, as the scripture says? You go, well, that's impossible. Really? Because the Bible says that before Stephen was stoned, he says he gave up the ghost. Mm -hmm. I read that. You know what? He decided. A few of them are There's several. But we don't catch it because we don't think in that framework of thought. He didn't want to think anymore. Yeah. Or, or even Jesus, what did he say? Father, I commend my spirit unto you. And he gave up the ghost. He decided, it's time. And see, if we're thinking as natural men, then we will live as natural people. If we think, if we understand scriptural context, then we can live as spiritual people. Okay. Go down to Habakkuk 2, 13, 14. It's in the bottom of the page. Verse 14. Well, actually, let me, let me, I'll just, just don't, it's not on this. I'm going to just as a note. Proverbs 29, 18. A lot of people get confused and they'll say, you know, where it says um, that my people perish. You know, and it's, they always quote it say, for a lack of, no, they misquote it all the time. Lack of vision. And it says they perish. It doesn't say they're destroyed. 
Perish is internal. Destroyed. You're internally. Why? Because you have no vision. Vision would be you run out of gas. You have no sustenance. You have no sustenance to be able to continue. You lack vision. My, my people perish for lack of vision. They get burnt out for lack of vision. For lack of knowledge, you're destroyed. And sometimes those two verses get mis misrepresented. Habakkuk 2, 13 through 14, uh, verse 14 says, For the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the water covers the sea. You go, well, is that true? Yes. It is filled. Here's the problem. They're there's people that are rejecting what the earth is filled with. Because his name shall be called Emmanuel. God in the future. Is that what it says? God with us. Okay. Se last scripture. 2 Corinthians 8, 7. Therefore, as we abound in everything, in faith and utterance and knowledge. Greek word, to be resolved, to be sure, to understand. And in all diligence and in your love to us, see that you abound in the grace also. I want to pull us if the positional side is here and your experiential side is up and down and emotional here. I want you to know you have availability to move up by believing his word. And it's as simple as that. You don't have to fast for it. You don't have to um, pray in tongues for it. I'm not saying those things aren't helpful. And I'm not saying those things should not be done. That's not for that. Just believe. believe. Believe what he said is true. Now we're fasting and tongues and all of that comes into play. That's part of your discipline. That's part of the strengthening the inner man. Those are all those things. Yeah. But it's not going to raise you up to that level. It's truth. And you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free, right? Make you free. We quote that all the time. But you know what we don't quote? The scripture right before it. Where it says, if my word abides in you, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. See, we quote the, we quote the end part. But if you don't know the verse before, you'll never reach the end. And then Christians are frustrated and confused in why they're not free. Because they haven't abided in his word. You'll never be free if you don't have the word abiding in you. And then even before that, submit yourself. <laughs> Therefore, unto God, resist the devil and he must flee. And we have a whole bunch of people resisting the devil that haven't submitted. And then here's the other side in church. We say that we say this. We say things like, well, God's going to humble you. God's going to humble you. No, he ain't. God ain't going to humble you. He ain't. You know why? Because the scripture says, humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. It is my choice. And if I choose not to, I won't. And in time, I will reap the repercussions of that decision. You need to make a CD and sell it to Well, I'm, I'm going to upload it on our, yeah. on our channel. That's why I have it recorded. I just I have a bunch of stuff I got to upload. I just don't ever have time to edit it. So, yeah, all right, guys. Let's, let, does that make sense? Any questions? Any questions before we pray and eat? We can still ask, ask questions afterwards, but I'm just saying, any questions? Anything that comes to mind? The new creation is amazing. And if we don't understand the new creation, the new, the new creation is why everything else works. The new creation is why renewing your mind is possible. 
The new creation is why you can be free financially, physically, emotionally. And when I say free financially, that doesn't mean so you can go and just splurge and spend. I'm saying free financially so you can fulfill the purpose of the kingdom. God has no problem with billions of dollars running through your hands. What he does have a problem with is it sticking in your hands. Exactly. Exactly. All right. Well, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your people. Lord God, we thank you for tonight. All of those people that we were able to just bless and pray and minister and heal and set free. Lord, I thank you because right now, Lord God, some have realized what has taken place in their body after we left. Lord God, and we may never see them again. But I thank you for setting them free and healing the sick. Lord God, in their lives and in their bodies. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.